you're, you're running to be US president. So as president, what would your position be? I mean, I, I assume you, you, you pursue a two-state solution. No, no, no. I'm running to head the American empire in order to dismantle the American empire. I'm an anti-imperialist. I think that America ought to be a decent and dignified nation among nations. We don't need a full spectrum dominance of foreign policy that tries to impose its will around the world. We've got 800 military units around the world. We've got 130 special operations in over 130 countries. We don't need to do that. As an empire in deep decay, the last thing we need is to extend military overreach to deepen the corruption among our elites of both parties. As you know that, you got Trump pushing the country toward the second civil war. You got Biden pushing the world toward the third world war. We've got, we need a better choice than that. And our citizens are just so frustrated and feeling impotent and powerless. And as Plato and others have taught us, uh, that's the makings of a um, tyrannical regime. That's the makings of a neo-fascism. That's what you have in especially in Trump, the neo-fascist Pied Piper. So as president, the first thing I would do is stop the war. We need a ceasefire. I'd stop the siege. I would end the occupation. I would defund Israel. I would refund the relief agencies. And most importantly, I would move toward a situation in which Jews and Palestinians can live together. I think the two-state the two solution is gone. <clears throat> there once was a, t a time where we had a chance for it, but the 800,000 settlements now make it impossible. The last thing you want is a so-called two-state solution where you end up with a Palestinian state that's so fragmented, that's so weak and so feeble, that you end up reproducing Palestinian subjugation and domination in the name of a two-part state, a two-state solution. That I think we need to be highly cre creative, we need to be highly courageous. And so I think that there uh, be a one state either with, with, with federation or one state across the board where there's Jewish safety, security, there's Palestinian safety and security, there's Palestinian dignity and equality, there's Jewish dignity and equality. I mean, what do you say to those who say that's hopelessly unrealistic, that you have two sides who hate each other and they can't live together in one state with equal say and equal rights? I'd say we have a number of examples of people who've hated each other. The Tutus and the Hootsies hated each other. Black folk and white folk hated each other in Mississippi and Alabama. There's a whole host of historical examples of people who have hated each other under certain circumstances and be able to accent the best. And there is a whole slice of Palestinians and Israelis who have worked together, who do not hate each other. Uh, but it's, it, it's a long road, and for those of us who have visions of, of a better world, we're always viewed as naive dreamers all the time. What's ironic is people say, oh, it's impossible, and then you break your neck and you actualize it, and they come back in the scholarly books and say, well, it was inevitable. No, it's people who cared, people who took a risk, people who cut against the grain, that's what is necessary now in the Middle East. And the good news is among the younger generation, I've been to a number of encampments now all around the United States and now here in, in Edinburgh. And among the younger generation, you got some magnificent Palestinians and magnificent Jewish folk who accent their common humanity, who can try to actualize and realize what appears at the moment to be a naive dream.